Over the next 10 years, we've been told to expect billions of dollars in GDP growth and hundreds of thousands of new jobs from the Chorus FTA. Korea's finance minister even described the FTA as Korea's next step in becoming a global FTA hub. So today we take an in-depth look at what businesses are doing to get there. South Korea is now the only Asian country to have free trade deals with both the EU and the U.S. And completing an FTA with China, along with a separate Northeast Asian pact with Japan and China, would put Korea at the center of a global trading network comprised of the most advanced markets in the world. So we decided to talk to companies taking Korea towards that future. And we started with CBRE, a Los Angeles-based global real estate provider operating here in Korea. Right now, you know, our, the, the retail side of things is, uh, is definitely going to open up, I think, even more. Um, to date, there's been a lot of European brands that have been coming into the market uh, as far as fashion. Um, now, with the EU, or with the Chorus FTA, you know, I think that we'll see a little bit more interest from a lot of other retailers in the States. But as the real estate manager for all of Korea Exchange Bank's branches and offices abroad, CBRE says the new trade deal may even help it do more business back in its home country of the U.S. if Korean companies expand and need more U.S. real estate. So currently, you know, through our experience with KEB, managing their, their portfolio, their real estate portfolio globally, uh, we're looking to uh, utilize what we've learned from them and, and using that experience and that track record to help us try and build some type of synergy with the Korean companies and how they manage their real estate portfolio abroad. With the Korea US FTA and the EU FTA in place, um, that is a good stepping stone for us to be able to. But what about new opportunities for entrepreneurs here in Korea? Fatbag is an online startup specializing in selling imported American products to expats in Korea. Nearly 50% of our grocery products are imported, uh, imported directly from the U.S. We expect that the Korea U.S. FTA will do nothing but help our business in the long term. Uh, current tariffs on the U.S. imported products range anywhere from 7% to even up to 40%. These cheese balls made in San Francisco, which sell for about $3 on Fatback's website, may go down in price if the wholesaler decides to pass on the savings from the FTA. But the bigger and longer term impact may be that more American products will be sold in shopping districts just like this one. One American we met in Myeongdong shopping mecca saw the trade deal from the Korean perspective. For the long run, I think it's going to benefit Korea more. I think Americans think that our cars will sell here and some of our products will, but American cars are too big for Korean streets. We went to an American car manufacturer, Ford Korea, which in the pre-IMF crisis days in the mid-1990s once commanded close to a third of Korea's foreign auto market. Before IMF, it's more than 30 percent, double digit. Yeah, uh, we went back to that golden age, and it will be someday, but we'll try. But uh, it takes some time because, you know, compared to that time, there are many very strong competi competitors in this market. Time and perhaps an immediate price discount. Before the FTA, cars like this best-selling Taurus were taxed 8 percent, and because of the trade deal, that tax gets cut in half, allowing Ford to drop the price on this model by about $2,200. American cars aren't rolling off Korean showroom floors in droves, but according to Ford, the FTA is a start. But it takes some time, but FTA will be the, the gateway to that end. Not only will changes take time, not all American products are as American as you may think. This sports drink and this cookie are actually made right here in Korea under partnerships with Korean firms and were already exempt from import duties. But in the long run, fewer deals like these may be made as businesses import American versions of these products made in the USA. Well, stay with us up next. We're going to see which everyday products like these will be immediately affected by the trade deal.
So we're now joined by Gmail Gil, who visited a local supermarket earlier today to see if there were any immediate effects on pricing. Welcome, Yang Gil. I see you went shopping. Oh, hi, guys. Um, I went to the store to find out if they put any immediate price reductions into effect. So can you guess which product had the highest tariffs? I don't know about the highest tariff, but it always seems the highest thing on my grocery bill is wine. Um, well, well, there's lots to choose from. How about the pork belly there? Uh, nope, sorry. Actually, it's the orange, and it was at 50%. And, um, but the tariff will be lifted gradually. So the products on my left um, can now enter Korea from the US, duty-free. And for example, this grape juice uh, I used to buy at the store for around $7, but its 45% tariff has been eliminated immediately. So now I can buy at the store for around $5. US dollars. All right, so the tariffs on the left is the one that's going to be gradual, no, immediately, immediately. lifted. And the right is gradually. Is yes, that right? that's right. Yes, yeah, so um, for example, I bought this wine, this bottle of wine for $30, this American wine, and now you can buy it around $20. US dollars, so. Okay, so there's an immediate price discount there. All right, and then what about the ones on uh, your right, the ones that will be reduced gradually? And the ones on my right, um, for example, duties on the pork, pork belly, the oranges, the beer, and the green grapes will be removed over a period of like two to 15 years. And the real question is the range of cuts actually, and whether importers and retailers choose to um, pass the savings along to consumers. So let's take an in-depth look. Most Koreans will notice the biggest difference when buying groceries. Tariffs that will be totally removed on March 15th will be grape juice, cherries, fisheries, bags, and wine. Agricultural product prices will drop the most due to the elimination of high tariffs previously imposed on them. The following products will have the tariffs lifted immediately. A famous brand of grape juice from the U.S. will drop from $9 to $5 a liter. A box of 40 cherries will drop to around $7. Almonds will edge down from $23 to $20 a kilogram. And California raisins will now cost $2 per 300 grams. Seasonal customs duties will be imposed on Californian oranges and green grapes as a safeguard for domestic producers. But this will be suspended after the end of the Korean farming season. As a consumer, we have high expectations. We might be able to buy fruit and beef cheaper. This is a typical Korean retailer, and the free trade pact will eliminate tariffs on a variety of products imported from the U.S. However, consumers are not so sure whether it will have a direct effect on the prices. Apart from groceries and meat, Tariffs on popular U.S. alcohol beverages will be cut by 30 percent over a period of seven years. Duties on cosmetics will drop 8 percent over a 10-year period. And by 2016, U.S.-made automobiles will not be subject to any tariffs. Koreans who buy an American car that has an engine displacement of 2,000 cubic centimeters can enjoy individual consumption tax breaks. If the tariff reduction is lifted by 5 percent, the actual reduction in consumer prices is a mere 2-3 percent. Prices may fluctuate according to the distribution process of retailers. Experts say the problem derives from the complicated retail distribution system in Korea, which keeps prices high. According to a finance ministry official, the government plans to continue monitoring prices and implement necessary reforms within the retail distribution network for the benefit of consumers. Right, so Myung so obstacles aside, the, cons uh, the Korean government is saying that the consumers here and the nation is going to save as much as, what, $32, $32 billion over the next 10 years? Um, yes, Ji, in fact, um, it looks like Korean consumers will come out ahead. Right, and of course, that's if the wholesalers, retailers decide to give consumers yeah. some of that discount or the the price break. All right, well, thanks so much for uh, joining us today and bringing us such a visual example of the free trade agreement's effects. Thank you. It was my pleasure, Sean and GA. Thank you.
we welcome you to Arirang TV's primetime news, covering in-depth and broader range of stories that affect you. Live from Seoul every night at primetime, the big picture from Korea. Amid its recent moves to normalize relations with the U.S., North Korea has reportedly agreed to an increased number of U.S. monitors to oversee the distribution of promised food aid. Pyongyang's recent turnabout appears to be part of efforts to consolidate power under the new Kim Jong-un regime. Choi Yoo-sun has the details. Reports this morning indicating that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un appears to be trying to consolidate domestic support specifically from North Korea's military leaders by reopening dialogue with the U.S. and vowing to promptly resume the six-party denuclearization talks. Following through on earlier pledges, North Korea has reportedly agreed to allow 70 U.S. monitors, more than expected, to oversee distribution of the recently promised nutritional assistance to the North Korean people. According to the Seoul-based Joseon